Ash from Super Videos back for another video for season 8 of The Walking Dead. In this video we're going to be taking a look at yet another teaser that was recently released by AMC. This one is different in a way that it has a behind the scenes look at the back half of season 8 so it's not explicitly a teaser. However, it includes a lot of new teaser clips here and there that I will be talking about here and breaking it down for you guys. Now, I originally didn't want to do this video because I thought that most of the stuff that was on there is stuff that we already know, even though it does have some new clips and some new things here and there that are very interesting. I feel like it was things that we already knew, but the more I thought of it, the more I realized that there might be some people that might not be clear on some of the things that were there and may need this type of breakdown. So, so let's get right into this. Now, these clips are not in the order that they appear in the teaser. I just put the ones that would actually go together and basically place them in random order. But I eliminated all of the cast and crew interview portion of the behind the scenes. So if you're interested to check that out, go on AMC's YouTube page and check it out. I'll try to remember to leave a link to the clip in the description as well. So let's get right into this. So first we have this shot of Carl. He is in his bathroom and he's basically looking at his bite. Now, this is definitely 100% a flashback. So it appears right after him and Sadiq come back. Most likely after he guides Sadiq to the sewers, he comes to the house and checks his wound. And we might even see him clean it up a bit and stuff like that. So this basically reveals that we will definitely see some sort of flashback. And the scene that we saw in a teaser, the clip with Sadiq and Carl taking the lid off of the opening to the sewers is most likely right before this happens. And then we also have this shot of someone writing something. Now from the silhouette or the shadow on the wall, this definitely looks like Carl. It most likely is. I'm pretty sure it is. And he is most likely writing the letter that we're predicting Rick is going to read later on. And this is most likely also connected to the other kind of shots that we've seen of Carl writing something on his journal. So those are definitely connected. Now we have some other flashbacks as well. We have this shot of Morgan diving away from the window as the saviors are shooting him. This is definitely part of the whole solo mission that Morgan, Tara, and Daryl went on when they slammed the truck into the sanctuary to bring the walkers inside the sanctuary. So it seems like they're definitely playing with time and this is going to be another sort of flashback. I don't know if this and the flashback with Carl are going to be connected or not. However, this is definitely another flashback. And we also see other parts where Morgan is running away from a building, closing the door. That's also most likely part of that flashback. And we have this shot of Morgan watching some vehicles drive away in the road. Again, this is most likely another flashback. It could be after Morgan and the others save Ezekiel if they save him, which they most likely will, and as they're going to Alexandria. But I'm leaning more towards this being another flashback and part of the other three flashback screenshots that I showed you just now. Then we have this shot of Enid and Aaron. They're at the ocean side. We know that they will go to the ocean side based on another teaser that was released. They're most likely talking to either Cindy or another top leader at Oceanside. Because at this point, Natania, the main leader, has died. So, you know, they might be talking to the next one in command or something along those lines. We also have these shots of Rick in the sewers, most likely. We do see a more broken or emotional side of Rick, which is to be expected because he just learned at this point where these take place that Carl has been bit. So it kind of makes sense to see him in that state of mind. We also have this shot of Michonne. She is again in the sewers based on the background and she is most likely looking at Carl in the shot here. We have some other shots of the survivors as they're basically waiting in the sewers with Tara here and Rosita here and some other background characters in the back as well. Then we have this very interesting shot of Michonne fighting Dwight. This is very interesting. I didn't expect anything like this to happen. It might be related to Carl. Dwight might have said, I understand you're sad and everything, but we got to think of a plan. And that might have ticked Michonne off. I would have liked it more if they didn't reveal this in the teaser because now that shock factor is gone. Now we know that 
they're going to get into a scuffle. But there's definitely going to be some sort of tension, some sort of altercation between Michonne and Dwight. Then we have another shot of Rick screaming Michonne's name. This looks to be at Alexandria and this is morning now. So I'm predicting that this is the morning after Carl was bit. And obviously, again, Rick is not in very good shape. He is emotional and he might be getting his emotions get the best of him. We don't know what's happening with Michonne. She might be doing something risky. That's why Rick is calling her name or whatever. Then we have this shot of Carol, Morgan, and Ezekiel there together. Now, with this shot, it definitely confirms again that Ezekiel is going to be saved. But again, I don't know why they're revealing this. It seems like they're revealing way too much because at this point now we know that Ezekiel is going to be saved. We already knew that before based on, you know, the comics and just the way things are heading towards. However, I feel like it would have been better if they don't reveal this. But we have Carol saying, you don't want to do this to Morgan. And Morgan replies, I have to. Now, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's going to sacrifice himself to save the others. However, I don't think he's going to die. He's most likely not going to die here because we do see him at Hilltop later on. If they're trying to get the audience to think that Morgan is going to die, it failed. It's not going to work because we know he's at Hilltop. They should have either not revealed that or they shouldn't have had this because what's the point? We know Morgan is going to make it back to Hilltop. So I feel like that's weird to show that there, but we also have this shot of Morgan with his bow staff making some sort of mark or maybe a line or something across the sand on the ground. This most likely is at Kingdom as well. Not sure why he might be doing this. Then we also have this shot of Gavin pointing the gun at Ezekiel. This is before Ezekiel is saved. We also have this shot of Gavin. He's kind of hiding out and stuff like that. I don't know where this is. It looks like it might be Kingdom, but it's difficult to tell. Then we have this shot of some saviors shooting at most likely Carol and Morgan. This is at the auditorium at the kingdom where we first met King Ezekiel. We also have this shot of Ezekiel looking under some sort of table where there's a gun. So this is most likely after Ezekiel finds an opportunity to escape and he finds this gun and maybe they shoot Gavin and kill him. Then we have this shot of Negan He's definitely at the same kind of conference area at the sanctuary. It's odd to be calling it that, but it seems like they put all of their conferences or meetings or whatever at the sanctuary in this room. And we have Lucille there. Now he's pointing at something. I don't know what, but I think he's most likely talking to Simon here. And, you know, he might be telling another savior about something that Simon might have said or Simon might have done. Simon might have at this point revealed or began to reveal what he did at the junkyard, which is going to be another very interesting interaction between the two. We also have this shot of Negan looking at a bloody Lucille. Now there are some YouTubers, I'm not going to name names, but there are some YouTubers who are using this as their thumbnail and putting a title in a way to make us think that this is the blood of a survivor. And it's Negan right after he killed the survivor or something, which is clickbait. It's a shame that there are YouTubers who do this, but it is. It's a clickbait video. Again, I don't want to name names. I don't want to create some sort of drama or whatever, but there's a lot of clickbait videos being made by YouTubers that I just hate. I just hate people doing that. If you follow my channel, you know I don't do clickbait videos. I just hate the idea of clickbait and I don't do it. There might have been like one or two instances where I did it, but one was on purpose because I was mocking and making fun of articles and YouTubers who do clickbait things like that. That's one instance. The other instance, I think I might have done a clickbait by accident. It was unintentional, but I definitely don't do it on purpose. I don't try to make clickbait videos on purpose because I just hate the idea of clickbait. I don't know. It might just be me, but I hate the idea of YouTubers making clickbait video, not even YouTubers, just in general, maybe articles, YouTubers, or anything like that. I'm just going to move on, but this is not Survivor. Negan just killed a walker, most likely, and this is probably connected to the other shot we saw in the other teaser where we have Negan hitting 
one of the walkers with Lucille. If you remember, he kind of turned around and smacked a walker in the face. So this is most likely right after that. This is most likely the blood of some walkers. And this might even be connected to what I talked about before. In the comics, there's a part where Negan and the Saviors use this tactic to get blood on their weapons, to weaponize their weapons and to use it and hit the survivors in a way that they don't have to die, but they're already dead, if you know what I mean. I'm not going to reveal too much for those of you that don't know, but I feel like this might be connected to that, to weaponize the tools and weapons that they have so that it's more efficient for them when they're hitting the survivors. Last but not least, we have this shot of some pair of legs. Now, I don't know who this is. It seems like they might have even been injured because of the way they're walking. It might be Morgan. I'm not sure, though. It's difficult to tell. But if you know about who this is or if I missed something or anything, let me know in the comment section below. But that's basically my breakdown for this teaser behind the scene look at the second half of season eight. That's it for this video. See you next time for another super video.